sure you're aware that it's quite hot outside and all that. Well, yesterday, um, I would say my physicality was meeting its limit. I felt like an emergency, basically, so I called 911. You know, and what else to do? Not, uh, I'm, I was uncertain, you know, with my physical, you know, my weight dropping, which I don't weigh much as it is. Um, it's getting to the point where liquids and foods to intake, my stomach was like already overloaded. Like this is too much. You know, working overworking the kidneys, it's possible. Um, in the movie, I have a part that is called the end of victimization. The ending scene of the end of victimization is an ambulance. Um, you know, it shows an ambulance, and. Um, well, I was basically victimized um, because there was a lot of mention about, oh, you know, he's got a mental history. He used to take this medication. Gotta say, who doesn't have a mental history? Experience itself, you have to be mental about. But that's how the pharmaceutical companies are just, they're another form of government because police and anyone that is of, you know, quote, you know, human services, you know, taking care of that person, whether it be someone of the ambulance or a nurse, um, they, they fully support the doctor's decision, which, you know, take medication in most cases. Um, so it was uh, rather just crazy, the experience with the, uh, you know, the persons with the ambulance, paramedics, uh, they, they weren't paramedics, they were more like police officers. There was more questions than uh, actually, you know, concerns. Um, I definitely needed medical attention, considering that, um, you know, at some point, you know, I was, you know, I, you know, I was sweating, but then at some point it stopped. Which, you know, in most cases, that's not a good, a good scenario. And you know, they were wondering how much water have I been drinking. I'm like, and I told them three times, which is this is uh, showing you the coherence of. Um, of what authority, you know, here does. I mean, authority, an eternal, um, an eternal example is actually quite unique. It's basically just the, you know, it could be as simple as um, only three expressions, you know, as far as authority actually, you know, kind of do exist. I mean, one's to say, you know, listen to your guide. And that's entirely supporting uniqueism. Also, another one is uh, to live and to be. I mean, if there's any laws and and all that is all, it's those three. But um, obviousism applied, it's not even necessary to bring any of that up. It's obvious to grow. It's obvious to create and expand. So, but I mean, hey, I mean, if you want to bring up the question, um, you mean questions are eternal. Um, what would what would authority be? That's what it would be. <laughs> Gotta say, uh, you know, other than that, it's up to you, you know, and that's it. So, I mentioned uh, that. Uh, I mentioned three times to him that I had overdrank, essentially. My stomach could just not intake any more fluids and, and any more food. Um, so, long story short, they're thinking that I'm on drugs. Um, they even, they even uh, you know, do a urine drug test, and it was just, it was only iffy, that's all. But they were talking about, you know, sending me to Augusta Regional Hospital in Georgia. Um, if you're familiar with that, which I don't think too many persons viewing this, even you know, if there was a thousand views, anyone's really going to know about that. But just to give you a heads up, um, that's the Bronx of me mental hospitals. It's 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 on the common side. So I'm left with uh, two decisions essentially. You know, should I call? You know, should I go to the hospital? They're telling me there's this chance that I could go there. You know, which I was you know prepared for either path, considering that. I guess it's pretty rough. Um, you know, I had to consider either path because they're they're trying to they're giving me psychological questions. They're questioning more than you know being concerned. So I think that act of preparation. I'm here now, so I'm obviously not at the uh, mental hospital. You know, definitely helped. But um, whether you um, believe me or not, but um, the process of in the movie itself with the end of victimization um, 
I I just recently was thinking about this. I had stopped the recording because I was just you know phone call. Um, but that part of the movie actually resembles a lot of what I experienced in, uh, you know, calling paramedics and going through that procedure and everything. It's not easy in that kind of condition. It's not easy being this sensitive, this receptive to so much. But um, it was it was a definite conquering of whatever you know stigmatas or issues I've had in the past with hospitals. Hospitals, you really can't be too comfortable there anyway. But um, I was able to decipher, and it was it was very gratifying. So. Um, I wanted to mention also that, you know, the old spell is still going. We're on day 102. Um, BP and the government, everything authority related to this spill has pretty much just copped out. Um, I mentioned in my predictions, eventually every single plan the government has is going to be, they, they didn't mean it, mean it for this, but it's actually going to be plan to screw them over. Now, I mean, uh, their plans originally weren't built around that, but their plans were built around if we were completely blind, if we just magically didn't figure out things, you know? But they didn't know about the spiral, you know, spirals showing up in five different areas of the world. They didn't know about any of this. They didn't know how they, you can't plan for a Dysia. I mean, Dysia is fusion. We're talking about existence to existence. So science on that level, they got nukes. Big whoop. I mean, on, on the scale of, of 0% to 100%, it's about 1.3. I mean, you want to talk about power? Talk about the power of realization. That's the first step. And if you see that in actual expression, you know, actually like with the eyes, you know, to see a being reflect that, you're going to see some crazy stuff. You might see like Krazar Solaris eternal wings from this being that... that that if to be measured would be 700 trillion light years in length. I mean, uh, uh, as far as the mental side, you can't see that. And that's the story within that being, what it means. And if it's flowing like a waterfall, you're evolving like that, which is exactly what a waterfall is reflecting. It is possible to flow like a waterfall, to evolve at that rate. It's the same thing that applies with tornadoes. If you want to take it a step further, Jupiter's 500 plus or 500 million plus year storm, the red spot on Jupiter. It's 500 miles in length. I mean, if you want to put this in terminology of exemplism, it's eternal. It's all eternal. So I wanted to post this video about, you know, just to give you a heads up on, you know, just just a bit more on what I'm covering on monolithicalism. There, there's an, an, I would say actually, it's officially almost exaggerated on how many examples there are in the movie. But um, highly necessary. There were so many exaggerated themes, and that re, re reminded me of um, how that whole process goes. If you have any type of mental history, if you've ever taken any medication, they usually use that against you. You become um, partially victim, but also partially um, criminalized at the same time. Um, I was basically criminalized with questions. I was telling my stomach feels broken. It feels like, it feels like it's shattered. Okay, that's pain. I'm calling you all for very obvious reasons, but they were acting like you know, it wasn't so obvious. It was more of questioning. So, just wanted to give you all a heads up on that. Doing a lot better. I uh, was able to get some answers. Um, answer or uh, answers. I was able to get some questions answered at the hospital. But um, they say it's a chemical imbalance. It's causing a lot of the pains. But uh, I guess I could have said, but that paramedic was kind of close. He was listening and he was. He was um, probably on standby if I had to be escorted to a police car to Augusta Mental Regional Hospital. But um, can you call uh, never, you know, having a relationship in real life, you know, since 15 to now, it's 11 and a half years, can you call that a mental imbalance? Or, you know, still be an aversion? <laughs> I mean, really? Or what about wanting to live life? Is that a chemical imbalance? There's a difference. A massive difference, and uh, you can take it from there. There's so many examples to go by. Thank you.